Don't forget, Colin Dunn against Esteban Morales still to come. But now, the third installment, Johnny Armour and Francis Ampofo. And here comes Ampofo, this extraordinary little man. Nothing has come his way easily, but a win could yet save his career here. This could be dramatic. John McDonald. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the third installment. Let's meet the challenger from Ghana and now based in Bethnal Green or East London. Would you please welcome the challenger, Francis Ampofo. The challenger, but he thinks he should be the champion. Francis Ampofo, who's now 35. 11 years since he first won the British flyweight title against Robbie Regan. Two times the British and Commonwealth flyweight champion and also a world title challenger against baby Jake Matlala. Only has one way to fight, going forward, throwing punches. It's an exciting style. Will it pay off for him tonight? Much loved figure in the business club. Oh, he really is such a, a nice little man, and it's going to be tough for him all over again. He's got to do it one more time, twice. You know, controversially, he hasn't got the, the title, and now he's trying for it again. And you, know, you can guarantee he'll try so much harder this time. He really will. Such a great competitor. Hasn't won since 1999 because of various title losses. Well, he looks far from a shot fighter, if we're honest with you. He's got an autistic son, hence the, uh, the markings there on his little gown. Autistic son, Samson. He ran the marathon once, I remember, to raise money for Samson and others suffering from autism. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome the champion, the pride of Kent Chatham, Johnny Armour. Plenty of support as well for Johnny Armour from fans who travelled through the Dartford Tunnel to be here tonight. Johnny Armour, another proud warrior. Professional for 12 years, he's 33, and he says that everybody who thought he lost the other two fights have got it wrong. And that tonight he'll prove that he is the better man in the third fight of this uh, little phantom weight trilogy. Well, you're ready and be a very good competitor. What style will he adopt? He can fight, he can box. How is he gonna? Prepare for this fight. How's he gonna fight? Southpaw, former Commonwealth and European champion. Only ever beaten once by a Californian, Carlos Navarro. So let's have a look at the tail of the tape for this fight. Combined age of 68, these two. And Popo, one of the smallest pros around, five feet, one and a half inches, always gives away reach, of course. Both inside the eight stone, six pounds, five, a quarter of a pound. And Popo, a pro since 1990, Johnny Armour as well. And uh, uh, Popo's lost a lot more fights. He's lost 10 in his career. Armour's only lost one. But their styles mix magnificently, these two. Ladies and gentlemen, very home for ringside boxing promotions in association with Prince Promotions and Matchroom Sport. Proudly present 12 rounds of boxing for the World Boxing Union's Bantamweight Championship of the world. Sponsored here by PokerMillion.com for a great game of poker. And a very warm welcome to our viewers joining us live and exclusive here on Sky Sports. You know you've joined us for the very best ringside seat in the business.
All the officials have been appointed by the World Boxing Union President John Robinson at ringside from Nordelf, Norfolk, England, in association with the British Boxing Board of Control. Our supervisor, Mr. Charlie Robinson of London, and our three scoring judges. From Australia, Des Bloyd. From the USA, Glenn Feldman. And from South Africa, Harold Goldberg. Timekeeper at the bell from Bromley, Kent, is Mr. Bob Edgeworth. Our referee in charge of the action from Leeds, England, is Mr. Mickey Van. They are the officials. Here are the contestants. Firstly, and introducing to you, the challenger. He's fighting out of the red corner, wearing the white trunks and weighing in at eight stone five and three quarter pounds. In a 27 fight record, he has 17 wins, 12 inside the scheduled distance, and 10 losses. He's the former two-time British and Commonwealth champion. Ladies and gentlemen, he's originally from Ghana, West Africa. He's fighting out of Bethnal Green, East London. Would you please welcome Little Samson Francis Ampupo. And now, the champion. He's wearing the gold trunks, trim with black and white in at eight stone five and three quarter pounds. In a 35 record, he has 29 wins. 17 inside the scheduled distance and only one loss. He is the reigning and defending WBU Bantamweight Champion of the World, the Pride of Kent, Chatham, Judy Omar. So let's get the action underway then. 12 rounds of boxing for the World Boxing Union's Bantamweight Championship of the World. Well, it brings to mind some of those old domestic trilogies. Remember Pat Cowdell and Dave Needham, Dennis Andres and Tom Collins at light heavyweight, and of course the famous Alan Minter and Kevin Finnegan fights. Ricky Van will referee this one. One of the judges is the same as for the last fight, Des Floyd of Australia. He scored it level a draw, as did two of the judges, and most governing bodies would have had that as a majority draw, not an Armour win. But Armour won with the third judge, and under the WBU's rules, he got given the decision. Hard to understand, but there you are. And that will apply, by the way, tonight as well, should it come to that. Could be another close one. Third fight between these two. The gold trunks of Johnny Armour, the southpaw, who's trying to use his boxing skills. Will it be something different tonight? He's changed trainers since the last one. He was with Colin Moorcroft, now with Mark Rowe. And Popo, as ever, trying to march forward. Now let's see if Armour tries to do something a little different this time. Well, I think Armour's the one that can. He can fight in different ways, and Popo really just knows one way he's come in and be busy fans are really into this you can tell a lot of them will have watched the first two fights either live or on television I'm sure I'm showing signs that he's prepared to stand his ground a little if needs be quite smart shots as well from Armour early on. Got to ask the question too, how much has been taken out of both of them by those first two gruelling battles? Well, that's exactly right, Ian. They both had long careers. Who's got what left? The, the, the fight all through the careers have been tough. And they've been going around a long while. Who's got something left? They know each other back to front, these two now, and Armour's made much the better start. Confidently snapping out his punches. He's just trying to stop Ampopo marching in on him in straight lines. Body shot as well. 
from Armour. Slow out the blocks tonight, Ampofo. Yes, he is. Maybe he feels he's going to have a you know, move on quicker as the fight goes on. And maybe not throw too much too early. Got there with a left hook and then a right hand as well, which rocks back the head of Armour. That was more like what we saw from Ampofo in the last fight. And drives a right hand through the middle. Do wonder how much longer these two can keep up this magnificent action that they've been providing us with. Good stuff from Armour again there. It's not a bad start, is it, to fight number three? Not, not bad, and Paul was starting to do a little bit more with the better boxing still coming from Armour. There's no dislike at all between the two fighters. There's nothing of a grudge, they're just honest pros, this. They both deserve a lot of credit. Left hand from Ampofo at the end of the round, but Armour, for me, did the sharper work. Well, it was a slower start this time from Francis Ampofo, who's now naming himself after his son. His ring name, his nickname is Little Samson. Well, just love his son so much. But there, Armour landing more shots, 19 to 14. He's just a sharper start. Just planting his feet, getting more into his punches. Armour, a brave, determined and gutsy survivor of a series of ring wars. Does have a tendency to cut and occasionally to fight with his face. tries to go to the body, looked a bit low. This corner of saying, make sure you get him ready. Cracking right hand, that's hurt armor. Cracking right hand, and the body shots as well. And Popo firing in the punches. Two vicious counters with the right hand from armor. What action! Oh, tremendous action. But Ampopo getting the better of it. Armor now trying to push Ampopo back and let his own punches go. Every time they get into the ring these two they seem determined to produce something better than the last fight yeah and i just think it's the styles they gel so well also the temperament both com good competitors heavy hooks from ampopo in this round and the body shot too armor can't keep him away not as quick on his feet as he once was of course it's tough to be dancing around the edge of the ring like this and try to fight with lateral movement when you're 33 and after a long old career of over a decade oh, much better work from Ampopo now putting heavy shots into the body as Armour tries and covers up and weather the storm this is the 26th round between these two over the last couple of years and most of them have been spellbinding Great body shots and an uppercut from Ampopo. Different now. Ampopo might have started slowly. He's picked it up now. He's the boss in this round. He's troubling Armour. He's just wasting less punches than he sometimes does too, Ampopo. I think that's something they've been talking about in the gym. Yes, it's more thoughtful, his work, his approach. Attacking as always, you know, just thinking about how he gives it more. Armour, reminder with the right hand. Keep the punches up, says Mickey Van. Blood from the nose of Armour. Not the first or last cut he'll ever have. As he goes back, calls on Pofo in, and Pofo duly obliges, as he always does. How do these two keep on doing it like this? And Pofo's round. Fans are getting the value tonight, aren't they? Well, I think that's why there's so many people here. They knew there was going to be value for money. loaded up with a big right hook got him flush on the chin and rocked him right down to his boots and a big attack following that from Ampofo 
Stayed on his feet though, Johnny Armour. 28 landed by Ampopo in round two to 19 by Armour. That's according to the computer. Great success rate there for Armour, but uh, he still lost the round. Terry Tool there with Mark Rowe, with Johnny Armour. He's been training at the Peacock Gym in East London. Locking himself away. Both of them tunnel visioned. I think they're both an absolute credit, don't you? Yes, they are. They really are. They work so hard in the gym, and when it comes to fights, you know, that's where they really do their business. Third round. Armour trying to keep Ampopo away with that right lead of his. And he pops a left hook and a right cross too. And Popo is on the hunt again. Oh, and a big right hand. And that stiffened the legs of Armour, who might go. With one of these, you feel the way this is going at the moment. Well, he's finding it hard, getting caught time and time again, leaning back on the ropes. Something's got to give, hasn't it? It's amazing the first two fights went 12 rounds with the intensity and passion involved. Maybe one of them will wilt this time. This time, Ampopo is rocked a bit by that left hand. Staggered him back a yard or so. Yep, two good punches from Alma there. In the Get right to the race. Now Ampopo's in trouble. Just listen to the roar of the crowd. This is a terrific fight again between these two. Both of them have been hit and hurt. Well, is that left going to take something out of Ampofo? He's not rushing forward as quickly now. That's another cracking left hand from Johnny Armour. Surely they cannot do this for another 12 rounds, man. <laughs> Ian, you didn't think that the, the first time or the second. Yeah. Well, I'm just marvelling at it. Steady on his legs a bit. Does Ampopo? Well, just pushed back there by Armour. But Armour's got the fire in his belly. He knows he can hurt Ampopo. Rocked him a couple of times in this round. They both look as if they just want to knock the other guy out. And have done with it. It's like two guys who are saying, let's settle this little argument once and for all. Yes, the boxing's got out of the window a little bit. They both want to win so bad. Oh, dear. That was absolutely magnificent. Well, where to start in showing the highlights of that round? If we showed you the highlights of the round, it'd last another three minutes. <laughs> well, there's the highlight of the round for Ampofo, the big right hand that really rocked Armour to the right to his boots, and then he came back with some good shots, getting Ampofo in trouble. And they're just rocking him back on his heels with that two-punch combination. Yeah. Tremendous action right from the start to the finish of that round in armor for me getting the better of it Corners, ten seconds. i've said it before whatever they're getting paid not enough Second round, round four. fourth round gold trunks of johnny armor the white of francis ampopo do not Go and make a cup of coffee. And Popa with the right hand. Again, Armour has to take a couple around the head, but he looks so dangerous himself, whipping in that left hand from his southpaw stance. And as Glenn was saying, Ampopo was rocked to the sole of his boxing boots. 
Well, he's more of a right body and he's more of a right armor. So when the overhand rights come in, that's where he can be tagged by shots from and poor four. You wouldn't want to call the winner, would you? No, you wouldn't. You certainly wouldn't. They're both giving everything they've got. Popo not really quite getting his punches off so far in this round. Arma tries to engage him from the centre of the ring, but not for long. He has to back for the ropes again. Francis Ampopo was born without a reverse gear. Well, that's what makes him such an exciting fighter, a great professional. Slightly quiet around, but then most rounds would be, wouldn't they, after the last? That third round was one of the great rounds we've seen in British rings in recent years. Good shots there from Ampopo, just pushing them out, catching armor. Steady pressure from Ampopo, he used to call himself the pocket battleship. That was a good nickname too for him. And a nice body shot from Ampopo there, and then a hook to the head. Got a little right hook too though from Armour as a reminder. How much did that last round take out of the pair of them? And steady pressure from Ampopo at this point. He's landing better in this round. Popo for me in this session so far. <laughs> Welcome back to Brentwood. Still to come, Colin Dunn's WBU lightweight title defense tonight in the ring. This WBU bantamweight championship fight and a splendid one-two between Johnny Armour and Francis Ampopo for the third time. They've served up a thriller. Yep. And a better round for Ampopo. These rounds have been thrown on my card one way than the other. I've got a dead level. But it really is a, a cracking contest. Two rounds apiece. Armour starts fast. Round five. Gold trunks. Armour was a tear away in his youth. Got him with the wrong crowd by his own admission. But he's always been value as a professional boxer. Proud Commonwealth and European champion. And Pofo, a British and Commonwealth champion. Which way does this one tilt next? Slick with the jab when he's allowed to be. Yes, he's trying to move, but then Ampofo gets little combinations off like that. And Popo's corner were urging him to throw straight rights. Well, so far, it's the hooks that have been the, the most effective for Ampofo. That's his usual style of attack, isn't it? Winging away with hooks. Just teaching him, I think, to be a little more economic with them. Well, that way he can maybe load up more Ian and get more power into the, the single shot. He's been outboxed a bit at the moment by Armour. In this round, yeah. Armour successfully keeping it at long range behind his right lead and then whipping in the left hand too. And Popo just looking a bit bemused by that. Yeah, a couple of nice straight lefts. For, um, for to think about. A 
just when you think one fellow's beginning to really take control of the fight, it always veers back the other way. That's how it's been with these two. Lovely left hand. Again, that made Ampopo's knees bend as it landed. That left hand from Armour. And a good body shot and a right hook too, twice over. Good stuff from Johnny Armour in this round. As he's getting the better of these exchanges, just looking a little and, tired. And Popo, only the ropes kept him up there. No count administered, but he would have gone down without the ropes. So that was a debatable one. Armour here, can he finish it? And Popo having to suck it up, and he's in trouble. Well, he's taking all the good shots. Armour really finding the angles and getting the shots in. And a big round for Armour. Huge round for Armour. Maybe the big breakthrough round in the whole three-fight trilogy. Well, just getting the shots off well. Just a few hooks there. He would have been over with those quick hooks had the ropes not kept him up. Should a count have been administered then? Well, there certainly could have been a reason for doing that. It was punches that had him like that the only question is was it a punch that sent him there against those ropes well there's the answer certainly looked like it to me one a little bit the final one a little bit inside the glove mm. seemed to land with the wrist didn't it yep Mickey Van Meer have just spotted that and given the benefit of the doubt considerable benefit it has to be said Mark Rowe who trained Julius Francis for his big fight with Mike Tyson. Now round six, can Armour come back again? Don't bet against it. These two men are gladiators, believe it. But at this point, Armour is looking sharp, getting the shots off well. And he goes down this time from the right, but it's only a slip. There was a right hand thrown just before. Again, no count. At the moment, Armour just seems to have taken Ampopo's measure, working very hard behind these right hands, and then whipping in the left. And at the moment, just at the moment, Ampopo doesn't seem to have an answer. Maybe he'll come up with one. But he just keeps coming forward. That's the, the hard thing for an opponent of Ampothos. What do you do? Mentally takes it out of you. Uppercut. And Popo missing more, though. in his work and Popo at the moment Armour's got the quicker hands isn't he yes he's got the hand speed getting the shots off the better accuracy is also with Armour there's a danger maybe with Armour that he'll punch himself out he's put so much into the last Four minutes or so, the heads banging together in close. Armour has a word with the referee about that. Now watch it. They've been complaining all night, the Johnny Armour corner, about Ampopo's head. It is a problem for his opponents. He does come in head first. Yes, he does. Three times the head cracked into the face of Armour. Well, he was right to look at the referee. Right hand from Ampopo still rolling forward. Tremendous left uppercut. Then a body shot from Armour. And then another right into the ribcage. The better work in this phase of the fight coming from Johnny Armour. Again the heads. And there might have been an elbow landed as well, I think. And he still keeps coming forward, Ampopo. Hard shots with sharp shots are with armor, but it's hard when you've got an opponent who's just in front of you all the time. Terrific stuff again, but armor's round. 
stay tight, suck in. You know that come fresh. Yeah. Suck in, bang, bang. Now listen, get them shots in. When you're into that body... Mark Rowe, now up. let's have a look at this incident where Ampopo goes down, not counted as a knockdown. Well, the corner, but I think he lost his foot a little bit there. I think it was a bit of a slip. Was ruled as such. Round seven into the second half of the fight. Good left hand from Ampopo, who's looked a little bit ponderous and sluggish. And they started to waste more punches over the last couple of rounds, but maybe he'll come through it and take control again. I wonder how hard both of these two found it to get up for a third fight. Well, it's what they do. You know, this is their business. This is what they're trained to do, so you've got to do it, but... It is difficult, you know, when you're having returns in a third one of the, the... Oh! There's no doubt about that one. Left hand, and Francis Ampopo is down. It was a superb shot from Armour, who's fighting quite superbly at the moment. And Popo down. Is he on the brink of defeat? Well, the signs that the legs are going a little bit of Ampopo with that knockdown. Yeah, just when you're thinking that a fighter may be on his last legs, back he comes to prove you wrong. Another body shot and a right hand from Ampopo in there as well. It's Looked handy, right. didn't it? That hurt Armour. Two right hands as Armour was trying to set himself. The pendulum swings again. knocked a bit out of armor and might lift down Popo who'd gone through a very bad patch in the fight including a visit to the canvas well he's coming back well now on Popo putting the shots in he really is there's another right hand though from armor and Popo has to duck his head through the ropes Well, what about this here? They're doing it all over again. Good oh. round. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Excellent. Two of the longest serving pros in the country, too. have seen most things in the business. Good right hand there, just seemed to dip the knees of Ampopo. These are what you call professional boxers, and I would underline the word professional. Getting swollen around the left eye to Ampopo, who had to take another heavy-looking left hand from Arma. Good body shot, too. And Arma's hand speed is decisive and his greater accuracy and he seems to be the one who's that bit more up for it to me this time as if he's trying to prove to the boxing world look you got it wrong when you said i was lucky the first two times yes he looks as if he's gritting his teeth more you know he's got that extra sharpness that extra aggression to pull it out when he needs to and there's the, the straight left just drilled right down the middle just putting and poor poor down on the seat of his pants now, this would normally be scored a 10-8 round, but let me tell you, under the WBU rules, not necessarily so, apparently. Well, they don't have to score it 10-8. <laughs> they don't have to. I think they should. It was a good knockdown and a good solid round from Armour. And for me, that's a 10-8 round and a good, good round for Johnny Armour. That seems to me like a nonsensical rule. Well, it, it, it does, but, you know, so many of these good bodies just seem to do exactly what they please. I wish they wouldn't. I've scored it 10 8 anyway, that last round of armor. This is the eighth. Yep, the eighth round, and I've got armor now. getting a handy lead 68 64, four points ahead now, so I'm told who's got a, a bit to do. Elbows and Popo away from him almost. Armour there. 
A battle of wills and desire. Oh, again, clash of heads. Again, Ampopo dangerously leading with his head. Not as good tonight as he was in the second fight, and Popo. He's not breathing quite as much fire. Armour is breathing plenty of it. Up, John! Up, John! Popo is certainly not as busy as he was in the last fight. And Armour a bit more prepared to stand his ground on those ropes and fire back, isn't he? His arm is looking better than in the last encounter. You know, he's got a little bit more fire in his belly, as if he's the one with more to prove. So when's the fourth fight then? Well, <laughs> I don't think I can stand it in my them. Oh, that's a great right hand from Armour. Brought it up through the middle. And then the body shot, mixing it up well. This is a man who's been around the gyms a long time, Johnny Armour, but Ampopo again plows forward. Left eye beginning to, right eye rather, beginning to swell up and close a bit of Ampopo. Still he tries to get these short little shots inside off and succeeds with that one through the middle. finding it so easy to rifle in those shots from range the jab working well against that eye that's ever swelling that left eye armor comparatively unmarked for once and this looks at this stage that this is getting hard from Popo Popo at the end of the round, but Arma is as much in control as either of them have been in the three fights. A decade ago that Johnny Arma won the Commonwealth title and made five defences of that championship. One defence to of the European later on. We've just seen the better, more accurate work coming from Johnny Arma. got three children to support needs the boxing to pay the rent again it seemed to come very close together it's a wonder that armor hasn't cut up again as he so often has in the past Oh, the skin seems to be getting better as he gets older, like most fighters. And Popo's eyes are closing up, left and right. The left looks worse. There's the uppercut going in there from Popo. I joked about the fourth fight. I don't think these two should be asked to fight each other again, whatever the result do you. No, I don't think so. I think they're, they're giving up to each other. Point deduction now for use of the head, Francis Ampopo. I think that's fair enough. Yeah, I agree with you and referee. And it's, um, it's a, a good one, I think. He, he has used that head a bit too much. And Ampopo falling behind on the cards already loses another point. Things getting a bit desperate for him at the moment. Armour has probably won the last four rounds. He's trying to hammer in these big body shots and pull forth. Now the right hand. Done with yet, and Popo. 
Going to the body, two right hands, three right hands, and Popo nods at Armour, as if to say, come on then, all right. There's still a classier shot from Johnny Armour, the extra speed. Well, just imagine the fitness and conditioning needed for these guys after their long careers to get themselves in shape to fight like this. You can only admire. 35 and 33, respectively. And they're still doing it, they're still doing it like this. Great shot to the body. Looks like a cut developing for armor by the left eye. Nothing too serious, I don't think, at the moment. Largely the same pattern again. And Popo pressure, but the shots that matter, most of them coming from Armour still. Still to come, Colin Dunn fighting against Estefan Morales of Colombia tonight, WBU lightweight title defence. Colin is backstage now and is going to talk to us. Yeah, Colin, well used to these big fights now. This is your seventh defence. I mean, you look relaxed. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling very relaxed, you know, comfortable within myself. Um, looking forward to, you know, uh, getting the first two rounds out of the way. I mean, this Esteban Morales is a bit of a mystery, man. What do you know about him? Um, not a lot, you know. I watched the tape once, you know, my trainers watched it a couple of times, and, uh, you know, um, you don't know what sort of fight he's going to fight, you know, whether he's going to be on the back foot or whether he's going to be attacking. So it's, um, it's not a fight, I'm not, you know, I'm looking to relish, but um, it's a fight, you know, that um, has to be won, and that's what I'm here to do. Thanks, Colin. So, Colin, talking the talk, you'll soon be walking the walk. Craig Slater there with uh, Colin Dunn. Comes up right after this one. And a timeout here, Mickey Ballas calling for some grease to be wiped away from the eye of Johnny Armour. Is there a way back for Ampofo in this? Well, there always is. You know, he's got these big looping punches. He, he's staggered armor earlier on and it's whether he can get the shots on to do it again you know when the fighters are starting to tire the punches have much more of an effect just lost his balance that time at Popo I was just hoping that these body punches weaken armor slow him down make him more of a target a stationary one anyway going to the body all the time and popo still believing still hoping that he can turn this one around frankly i thought he was robbed clearly robbed in the second fight you could argue about the first one but armor is in control of this this is educating Boxing from Armour, using the jab when he has to, bit of movement, then getting his hands up when Ampova wants to attack. It's good pressure from Ampopo though here. He is getting closer. This is where he needs to be, nailed to his chest almost. Just denying Armour the room to work. where Armour wants to be, on the outside, spearing out that right jab. He's had more success in this round, I'm talking with these body shots, stopping Armour from coming back with a great deal. Makes you tired watching it, doesn't it? Well, they do throw so many shots. it up in the last minute of the round like an old pro armor this time but and Popo's landed with a few body shots in this round yes I think he's done more in this round and Popo it's been a steady pressure cracking right hook from armor not so much snapping and Popo's 
punches out noticeably. Oh, he looks tired, doesn't he? But very credit to him. He keeps the shots going in. And the more this round for me, I'm poor for. Yeah, I thought first two minutes of the round, Ampopo, last minute armor. So I think Ampopo would shade that. Here's what the computer is saying. The punch is landed. 246 by Armour, 217. Much, much more to the body, though, by Ampopo. And many, many more to the head by Armour. A lot of times about Raiders, Ampopo has concentrated in a lot of rounds just to the, the body. Did in the last, and it served him well. As you said, in the first two minutes, probably did a lot more and won the round for that. So we've still got a little bit left. I've got armor in a four-point lead. I've got armor in a six-point lead. We really have got him in a, a, a big lead there with a smarter boxing. Round 11. That's hope of the white trunks, the goal of Johnny Armour. The third and surely final meeting between these two armor winning the first two in controversial circumstances and Popo trying to wipe out the scorecards and render them irrelevant with a late attack Lisa Lake now Francis and Popo starting this round very well he is Jimmy Tibbs claps his hands alongside me and waves and Popo in Best for a while, this from Ampopo. Armour has to hold it all together. He must sense that he's in a handy lead, too. Still fighting almost one-eyed, Ampopo. That left eye is just a slip now. No, oh, not getting out of the way of many of these. Sustained attack from Ampopo, almost fighting on instinct. What a brave, gutsy little warrior he is. Armour slowed up a bit. He's just getting outworked by Ampopo a little. That's a lovely little right hand, mind you. From Armour. Slapping, I thought, there with the inside of the glove with those last two. Yes, he was a little bit trying to get two hooks off straight away. Just a little bit inside of the glove. Three judges scoring at ringside. Nice clean shot there with that right hand from Armour. And Popo with a point deducted, remember, as well. knockout doesn't he now and Popo yes I, I think he does but he was trying for there and there's a couple of times he rocked him and you know he'll still feel the knockout is a possibility and with left hooks like that it may well be tremendous punch took an awful lot out of Johnny armor really winding up and just got him on the edge of the chin a little bit higher up 
He may have done the trick. The back punch is landed. Armour more. 18 more, says the computer. Last round. Of what's been another titanic clash between these two. Just when you thought Armour was coasting home, and Popo really rocked him in the 11. Well, oh my God, he needs a knockout. Five points clear, 106 to 101. In, that, in Armour's favour, what has Ampopo got left? I've got something similar. Crowd on their feet here in this Brentwood centre as Ampopo throws in everything. Again, another head flash. They've been seemingly a hundred. Two old-fashioned boxing heroes. They really are. It's another fight of the year candidate. Particularly rounds three and eleven, I would single out. Roy still pushing forward so hard. Once there's so much Francis and Popo. Oh, just staggered back by that, wasn't he? That left hand. The crowd enraptured by this. You couldn't choreograph entertainment like this in the movies. This is pure sporting theatre between these two. Well, tremendous work from both of them right to the very end. But Arma sticks with it despite Ampopo throwing in absolutely everything in a heroic late effort to salvage it. But if Arma stays on his feet, we think he'll have done enough to win and beat Ampopo for a third time. What a flashy barrage of punches from Arma. You can hardly hear yourself thinking here. Salute both of them, they've done it again. Well, tremendous action, both throwing punches for seconds who counted down. Well, I said, could they do it for 12 rounds again? They have, almost incredibly. It's all over, a mutual embrace, and I'm sure those two in times to come will chat over a pint or two about their famous three fights together. Arma lifted a lot, and I think no doubt this time, He's won it. Well, there shouldn't be any doubt. A clear winner. He did a lot more. He really was on good form. Finished with a, a cut eye. But he, he did box a great fight there. Johnny Armour. And four points ahead on my card. I've got it by uh, six in the end to Armour. Remember, there was a point deduction too for Ampopo. Three judges to score, Des Floyd, Glenn Feldman from the United States, Floyd, by the way, from Australia, and Howard Goldberg of South Africa. Computer says that Ampopo threw over a 1,000 punches to Armour's 746, but Armour landed more for a very good 40% success rate. Computer doesn't tell the whole story, far from it. Armour looked a clear winner to us. But we thought Ampopo won the other two. Well, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so you never know, do you? You never know. We've learned to take nothing for granted. Well, 115, 111, that's how I have it. a clear winner for Johnny Armour. Cleaner punching throughout for me. Did you take the point off, by the way? For I the did. Yeah, OK. You still had it by four. I had it by six in the end for Armour.
and they think they've won in that corner. You could see the way Mark Rowe lifted Johnny Armour aloft at the end of it. They are two incredible gladiators. Well done, the pair of them, however it scored. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your chance now to show your appreciation to two fantastic warriors. That was 12 rounds of boxing. A full credit to both boxers. All the judges' scorecards are ready. Judge Glenn Feldman scored the contest 1-1-3, 1-1-3. Des Bloyd scored the contest 1-1-5, 1-1-1. Howard Goldberg scored the contest 115-111. Your winner, and still... Yeah! Oh, has won it for a third time, and rightly so. Justice done. Can't see for the life of me how Glenn Feldman of the United States saw that as a level fight. Unbelievable. Yeah, no idea in a second that 115-111 had it. Well done to Johnny Armour. Very much hard luck to Francis and Popo. Great stuff again. Great stuff. They've still got a few rematches to come before they rival Ted Kid Lewis and Johnny Basham around the time of the First World War. But the rivalry between these two is also surely going to go into British boxing history in its own right. Could they ever do it again? I tell you, at ringside tonight, Spencer, I'm actually humbled, humbled by the commitment and dedication, fitness and desire of both men. Don't forget, Colin Dunn's still to come, but just briefly give us an appreciation of what you've seen there. I mean, the first contest was amazing, the second one even better, and I think we've just seen the third and the third and best one. from The, the effort from both boys is just, just amazing. Um, Johnny Armour, actually, I thought he did win that contest, but the commitment by Francis Zampufo, again, tremendous. What an excellent contest. We might not see better this year. You're probably right. Johnny Armour, was that the best he has fought in each of the three fights? Definitely the best that he's fought. He looked sharper and he was committing himself, really throwing those shots with venom. He was going, he wasn't punching to the target, he was going through the target and looked in tremendous condition and by far the best performance from him. And did that sway it conclusively? Well, in, except in the case of one judge, yeah, conclusively. Yeah, Francis Ampofo, I had losing by two rounds, but Ampofo was doing the, the busier work. He was throwing the, the punches, but the sharper work coming from Johnny Armour. Can Francis Ampofo possibly follow that, given that he's lost again and he, he's now lost five in a row? Well, we could possibly see a fourth one because I know everybody would pay for it. Let's hear from our winner and maybe Francis will come and join us as well. Well, after 36 rounds of boxing with Francis Ampofo, we, we finally get a clear win for you, Johnny. It surely was the win of your life. Oh, I'm so glad to get this one over with. It was like a... After all the critics last time, and it was so close, I just thought, I've got to do it this time, clearly. And I did, and I broke my hand as well, I think. What on earth did both of you go through for another Titanic battle? Probably the best of the three. I mean, I don't know which was your favourite. I think this one was about the favourite, I think. <laughs> but uh, he's, he's a tough battler. I stick my, my hand out to him. He's, he's a great, strong, fit fire. But uh, I just wanted it so much more. Me and my kids, I just want to say, I like my little lacy Shannon and Kai back home as well. Thanks. I think he wanted it just as much as you did, Johnny. Do you ever want to see him again? Maybe for a drink? Please, God, that's the last He's time, I hope. <laughs> Thank you very much, and congratulations, Francis. And we're still not finished yet. 